Well, here we have a wonderful copy of a German chamber organ by Robin Jennings, um, one of the finest instruments available within the UK uh, because it has such variety of pipework on it that allows it to blend with instruments but also take a solo role. Um, this organ's fairly close to what Handel himself would have uh, understood as an organ in Germany, uh, in Italy too to a certain extent, and in uh, England where there were quite a large number of German organ builders and they copied the German style a lot. Um, if one thinks about the organ in the late 17th and early 18th century, it's probably the most complicated form of machinery and the most important human artefact one can think of at the time. Uh, and because of that, I think it was thought to embody so much of the human and godly spirit. It tries to sort of encompass all the sounds that you might have in an orchestra, something of the vocality uh, of the human voice, obviously, the lovely uh, tone of singing, um, but also the notion of everything belonging together, the instrument harmonising as a whole. Handel was always keen to promote the organ in the context of the English church and concert scene. Um, so he actually um, devised the notion of introducing an organ to the theatre, uh, which was quite a novelty uh, in the early 18th century, and in his oratorio performances actually put in concertos during the intervals of the oratorios to show off his own uh, skill as an organist, but also I think to promote the organ. He, he uh, had several colleagues in the organ building world who built wonderful instruments with very long uh, mechanisms that allowed him to play at the front of the orchestra and play the pipes which were at the back of the orchestra. So it was quite a complicated instrument, one uh, a style of instrument that's never been um, done since. In fact, we're not quite sure how they did it. While this organ is in many respects based on 18th century models, particularly German ones, um, there's one big difference between then and now, and that's back in, uh, in the time of Handel and his colleagues, uh, they would have had to have uh, a boy to pump it, uh, to keep, keep the air up. Now we have electric blowers, so it's much easier uh, to have the organ on. But it does make you think about how they must have practised, how they uh, would have had to employ somebody even to practise an organ of this kind. So they probably used different instruments like clavichords and harpsichords to actually get the notes, as it were, and then came onto the organ uh, when they could afford to pay somebody to pump the thing. There are two basic uh, organ sounds for organs that are relatively small, uh, that don't have reed pipes. And the first is the, is the flute sound, which is, is literally like a flute. Uh, here we can have it for the, the third movement of the G minor concerto. gentlest sound of the organ, beautiful, beautiful flute-like sound. And then we have what in Germany is called a principal sound, uh, which is the main sort of singing organ sound. Uh, in England it's often called the diapason, and it's the sort of noble organ sound that you so often associate with Handel uh, and other composers of the Baroque. beautiful sort of sound. Um, and the other thing about an organ is that you can build up chorus work, uh, both up to sort of brilliant um, solo sounds, such as in the fast movement of organ concertos. So it's lovely, it's like, it's like the full string orchestra playing together violins, uh, beautiful articulation. And that's another good thing about this specific organ is the action allows you to do so many little subtleties of, of note lengths. Uh, but the other thing the organ allows you to do is to build up a sort of chorus as the piece goes on. And that's particularly useful here when you have a variation set. So you might start with just uh, the, the diapason sound and the, the equivalent sound an octave higher to give it a bit, bit more brilliance. Mm -hmm. 
And then you could add uh, a little bit more, uh, a two foot to that for the next variation. And then for the final one, uh, we've got some very high pipes, very small pipes, which give us a most brilliant sound. That's the sort of fastest speech of the organ. You can hear very, very precise, but also brilliant in sound. Uh, so even though it's a very small unit, uh, you have a huge range of sounds, uh, which in a sense mimics the entire orchestra. Thank you. 